And we're very sorry that we aren't able to have our normal open evening because this is the evening when we would have done our normal open evening and you could have come and had a look around the school and, and spoken to our students and uh, spoken to the teachers and hear me speak. Um, but obviously because of the circumstances we haven't been able to do this. Um, so on our website there are a couple of videos that we've created. There's the normal presentation that I do at this time of the year um, and also we've done a little video tour uh, of the school showing um, the new building and uh, a few interviews with teachers uh, and students uh, as well. But we thought it'd be useful just to do a bit of a QA. and a um, I'm Mark Anstis, I'm head teacher here at Feltham Community College. And I'm, I'm Ed Whiffin, I am deputy head teacher here at Feltham as well and uh, I'm in charge of the transition um, for the year six is coming up into year seven. And uh, behind the camera, I'll just uh, introduce people who are in the room. We've got uh, Dale Manning. Dale Manning is our fantastic uh, associate assistant head teacher and head of media studies. Um, so if anything goes wrong, technically we can blame we can blame Dale. Um, and we've also got Michelle Kelly in the room. Michelle is the other deputy head here at Feltham and uh, she will be uh, asking the questions that have been sent in by parents and students. Uh, and so um, she'll be she'll be doing that. I'm also really pleased because we've got Maddie with us uh, this evening as well. Maddie is our current head student. Uh, she's in year 13 and we thought it would be really useful to have Maddie here. So if there's any students or parents who want to ask uh, a current student in our school a particular question, then one of us will step aside and Maddie will come in um, and answer some questions. Uh, so that will be the format. We'll also, um, we'll also do a frequently asked questions uh, sheet uh, following this particular evening and uh, so we can put those up online so people can find out more if they're able if they're not able to see us tonight um, or they haven't got their questions asked um, and the other thing I would say is you know if you do have any particular questions and we're not able to cover them now or you can't find out about them from our website then always feel free to email into the school the school email address is on the website and someone will get back to you uh, with, with a particular answer. So we're happy to ask uh, answer questions that are put forward. Um, so I think we'll make a start. So Michelle, if you want to ask the first question that we might have. Okay, good evening. So our first question comes from Helen. How could you influence me to pick your school over others in the Bogner Regis area for my child? Okay, um, it's an interesting one. I think I think we're very lucky in this area. I think um, you, you have a good choice of secondary schools. Uh, and I'm certainly not going to sit here today and be critical of, of other schools. I think all the, the local schools are really good. Clearly, I think that Feltham is, is the best. Uh, one of the things I usually say is, is it, <clears throat> it is about a match. It's about a match of, of, your, of your child. And um, where I think we've got strength is that we are, you know, quite a big school. We've got amazing facilities now and we have strengths in all different areas. And our job is to work with parents and find out the particular strength that uh, the young person has uh, and then we can get them to flourish and succeed in that particular area. So I do think we've got a lot of strengths in, in many areas in in the arts, in music and in drama and in sport, but also, you know, great departments in English, maths and science. I think we cover uh, an awful lot of things. I think one of the things that characterises our school when people come round is that they do think that it is it is friendly and it is um, it is kind of a family feel uh, that, that you have here uh, and clearly it's difficult to demonstrate that when you're online doing these sorts of videos but that's what people say that's what staff say uh, when that when they join the school as well someone wants to describe the school as as being like a, a home when they come around here rather than like some institutions where it may be a little bit of a show home uh, and, and look very flash but maybe um, you know, there isn't real, a, a real heart to it. So I do think that that's one of the characteristics here um, and that we want to know the students as individuals as, as well. Um, I think there's sometimes a bit of an obsession today with, you know, data and results and, 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 and so on. But we talk about the individual child and we want to get to know the individual child. Uh, and I think that's one of the one of the key issues uh, that, that parents look for. Uh, when they're choosing a school and I think that's one of our strengths. I don't know if there's anything you want to add. I just Ed. think um, I think the schools um, 
very simple in the fact that actually we want to get the small things right and that leads to bigger things so we don't necessarily just focus primarily on the academic success we look at the whole round rounded education that whether it be um, extracurricular or whether it be um, working with leadership whether it's working in the community we look at the whole package of a student rather than just leading on success um, in exams because we believe that uh, a better individual, a better student is is created by giving them a rounded education rather than focusing on one thing. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks for that. And I think that was what we were really pleased with the last couple of Ofsted inspections that we had. That, that you know that, that those characteristics of the school were highlighted um, by Ofsted. And obviously, you can go on the Ofsted website, and there's links to the Ofsted uh, reports on, on our school website as well. So hopefully, that has answered your question a bit. Um, give us another one, Michelle. Thank you. So Ian says that his daughter would be arriving at secondary school in West Sussex from outside of the area and therefore will know nobody. <coughs> We'd like to know what support is available to help her to come to MSS. I'll start and then <laughs> you can jump in. I was just looking at the data actually before uh, I came up here uh, and we take look, this year, current uh, year seven, who started in September uh, just earlier this month, um, we had students from 23 different primary schools. Now, um, and a number of those schools, about half a dozen of those schools, we only got one student um, and all of the students are of equal value and we pay particular attention where we've got a single student coming from uh, a, a school because we want to make sure that their transition is as, as smooth as, as possible. Um, we mostly take students from the closest three schools. We take most of the students uh, from um, Bishop Tufnell Downview and Edward Bryan, but you know we take uh, a number of students um, from other schools locally. But as I say, we also get students from from further afield as well. But we want to make sure that we can provide a bespoke package for them. Um, and Ed can talk a bit about the transition uh, activities that we do. But one of the things that we'll always do is that if there's a particularly anxious child, um, they can always come in during the summer term. Uh, and have individual visits and have a, a, additional tours as well, just that they're, so they're completely put at ease before they start in September. Ed, do you want to just talk yeah. a bit about what we normally do in transition? Yeah, so a couple of couple of um, times this year we've had students that haven't had a transition because of because of the pandemic, and um, they've spoken about their anxieties around um, the school and coming to school and not knowing anyone. But one of the good things we do here as part of the transition, hopefully next year, is is that we try to get the smaller schools coming in to visit us on the same day and that allows you as a as a student maybe one student from a particular school can come and meet friends who are in a similar situation from another school and that's been quite powerful in the past where they've they've made really good friendships and really good links um, other activities on those days we do a transition day we also do a magic day in year five but on the transition day itself you get to relax a bit around the school, you get to do a tour, you get to meet some of the members of staff, you get to meet your tutor, you get to meet um, any uh, other people in your tutor group as well as your tutor room. And what that does is it allows you to make new friends. And what we try to do is ensure that um, you are comfortable throughout the day. So therefore you can have those conversations. You are put into sort of challenging situations where you do have to make those conversations um, to to overcome a barrier and, and that's important for us because um, we're not always going to be there to help you with those individual um, issues that you'll have. So it's about being a bit more resilient and having the opportunity to train in resilience, but in a controlled way. And that's what our transition days do. Um, we also have before we start the transition program, um, myself and the SENCO and maybe the EAL leader in the school, we come and we visit every single um, student that's going to come to our school. Um, just so that you've got a familiar face when you come up here on the first day, but also so that we get to know um, your your hobbies, your what things excite you, um, what your aspirations are for the future, um, what, you, what subjects you enjoy, so that we can then really work on those, the tutor can work on those, and we can, when we're doing the tutor groups, we can look at similar students um, who have the same interests so therefore you can build some friendships from there as well. That's good I mean one of the things that always I find uh, remarkable and, and quite lovely is how quickly new year sevens um, from all different schools integrate into the school. Uh, I often think parents are more anxious about the process than the students themselves and, and as Ed has already said they come up for two whole days 
uh, in, in the summer term. So we have a welcome day, then we have the transition day. Um, and clearly on the first day, when the first uh, when they first start, um, they are going to be, or some of them are going to be a little bit anxious and they're going to be a little bit nervous, but obviously we're experienced in dealing with them. Um, but what is delightful is that a few days later, we see them going around the corridors and they're completely at home uh, and they're completely relaxed. So, you know, they do adapt very, very quickly uh, to the process. And I think we're quite skilled in making sure that they feel comfortable and uh, giving them the information that they need to be successful. But in sort of summary, in answer to the question, we do have quite a few children every year who only come from uh, one particular school. Uh, and we really make hard, uh, work hard to make sure that they you know, have an opportunity to make friends and, and fit in. OK. OK, thank you. We've got a practical question now over whether or not we provide breakfast club and what kind of extracurricular activities. Yeah, yeah so there is a breakfast club in the morning <coughs> and the library's open early as well for students to come in and maybe just sit and do their homework or they sit and read in there. We do have um, the canteen open for students that want to arrive early to come and get some food, some breakfast. Um, extracurricular wise we we run clubs in every in every subject um, and the ultimate aim of our extracurricular is to um, try and get a first for learning and try and um, get an interest in a particular area which then can just launch uh, their academic success because they're really interested in it. and what we find in school it isn't just one subject so for example science it's all scientific stuff actually what you'll find is from those extracurricular clubs it it, you start to realise that actually with a particular problem in science, you're going to need maths, geography, history, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's actually trying to understand um, the wider community of the school rather than just um, looking at individual subjects. I, I always have a conversation with students that, that say to me, why do I do history? And, and it, sometimes it's, it's students that necess won't necessarily go into a history um, qualification when they're older but they might go into a construction trade or something like that and and what the extracurricular does is it gives you an opportunity to realise why um, different activities are important in the wider community because if someone's in construction for example they will any any sort of customer will always ask well what they will always ask something about history for example so it's always a good way for them to understand well why we would have different extracurricular clubs and why would they would want to go to extracurricular clubs for getting a wider education within the school. Okay, good, thank you. Right, thank you. So I've got a question here from Isabel who says, in your opinion, what would you say your biggest strengths are as a school and what are your school beliefs? Well, it's quite a lot there. Um, <coughs> our biggest strengths um, as a school, I think it goes back to the ethos again and the culture. That, that we have here that we want to make sure every individual child uh, succeeds um, and so we work really hard with them academically to make sure that they get the best possible qualifications and we work really hard to break down any barriers that they may have to their learning um, although we're a big school children are known individually they're put into uh, form groups which are sort of 25 28 students uh, the form tutor sees them every day. It's kind of the first point of contact. Uh, and then ha they hopefully go with them all the way through the school from uh, year seven through to year um, 11. We have a different system uh, in the sixth form with year 12 and year 13. Uh, and then we've got year leaders who also stay with the year group as they go up through the school. The year leaders are teachers um, and they run the assemblies and they do a lot of the academic support and partial support. And then we have um, year managers as well who are full time support members of staff who work with the year group. So I think that's a real strength of our school, the sort of wraparound care that we can provide. And, and the fact that, you know, we do gifted and talented clubs to stretch students, we do trips to Oxbridge, but we've also got a, an outstanding SEN department to support students who might struggle a little bit uh, with literacy and numeracy. We've got a learning support unit um, where we've got some of our students who might be a bit sensitive, a bit vulnerable, and they can go there uh, and get some extra support. So I think it's that that all that, that kind of care uh, is one of the key strengths uh, that we have as a school. What's the second part of the question, Michelle? So the second part of that question is what are our school beliefs? Okay, so I mean our school beliefs in a way are our school aims. Um, <clears throat> I talk a bit this, about this on our, our video. Um, I, we gave this a lot of thought when I started uh, 
10 years ago. I've been head teacher here 10 years. And uh, when I did first start, it was a chance to reset, I suppose, the, the school. And I worked with uh, the governing body at the time. And uh, that's when we came up with our ACE values, ACE standing for achievement, care and inequality. And I think that <laughs> sums things up. I think schools sometimes are overly complicated and uh, actually you got to you got to keep it basic. We, we want to make sure the students make progress, learn and leave with fantastic qualifications because that can provide them with um, opportunities. But we also understand that we want to make them lifelong learners and we want to prepare them for society uh, as well. So they need to pick up those skills uh, as well. So it's underpinned by care to making the school a, a, I think a happy place and a safe place where students feel comfortable. Um, and then also equality is important to us because all children are different. They've got different experiences, different backgrounds, um, but they're all of equal value and we want them all to be as successful as, as they can be. And having quite a large school with lots of different great facilities means that they can tap into the thing that they're particularly good at. Um, and they can benefit in that way. Okay. I have another question here from a parent who says their child is working well below the expected level for her age. What support do we offer to support children with special education needs? Let's talk a bit about sort of transition and where we pick up information. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's an anxious time for students to come up from year six, specifically if they've um, if they're struggling academically at primary school. But what we do is we have a fantastic curriculum support centre that um, our Senco sits and manages a large team of uh, teaching assistants, um, and they do some high level um, intensive intervention to try and catch students up when they come to us early doors in year seven. And what that does is it, it allows the students to become more confident in their English and maths. It opens that, it's that sort of pathway, that gateway to a wider education. And um, if that if that isn't caught up straight away, it's not to worry because actually um, that support then carries on and continues. And our teachers here in the school are very well versed in differentiating work in classes so that no student is ever left behind. Don't, they, they teach to the top and they, they support from below. And actually that's really, that's one of our strengths in the school is actually we, we are a comprehensive school and we, we do um, cater for a lot of different individual students. So therefore we do have to differentiate really well. And that's something that we do in the school and we support everyone, that being those that apply for the top universities, but also those that, that do need a bit of extra support. Yeah, and we've got different pathways as well. Um, and so there are different options that students can take at, at GCSE level. We've got different qualifications that suit different sorts of students with you know, different abilities. You know, our brightest students do triple science and do a combination of, of different A levels uh, post 16. Those are the ones that go on to Russell Group universities, go on to Oxford, go on to study medicine and veterinary and so on. Um, but we've also got other pathways for, for students who've got different skills. Uh, and so we can make sure that they're successful uh, as well that and they can get on the right pathways uh, and either stay on in our sixth form hopefully or, or maybe take advantage of, of other opportunities in other local colleges and educational providers okay thank you our next question goes to ed this is from tom who's a year six student he would love to know what we do to help on the very first day of starting year seven to help him settle in <laughs> hello tom um so the first thing it's it's, it's never it's never um a comfortable experience coming to school. Um, anxieties, especially for the first day, anxieties um, present themselves in very many different ways to our, our human body. Um, and what we try to do here is to welcome you with a, with a smile. And sometimes that's, well, most of the time that smile um, allows you to relax. And that's what we want you to do here at the school. We want you to relax because if you do relax, you, you learn better, basically. And when you learn better, you achieve more and when you achieve more it leads on to greater things later on in life um, so when you arrive on our first day you'll be presented with a smile you you will have um, already done your welcome days you've done your transition days so you would know who your tutor is you will know a bit about the school um, you will obviously know me you you will know some other members of staff as well you will know lots of different um, people some different students you might what we what we do if we're in sort of not pandemic mode we have our year 10 to appear mediators who come in and help 
to um, support you in your tutor group. So you'll have them for the whole year in your in your tutor base and they will also meet you. So there are lots of different um, strategies that we have in place to make you relax because we want you to be relaxed around the school. And on the first day of term each year it is only the year seven and the sixth form who we have in. Um, and uh, you spend the day with your form tutor doing group work, different activities, um, going to get your um, a dinner card or uh, other things that we do, doing a tour of the school and doing quizzes and so on. So it is, you know, quite quite relaxed. And it was lovely actually this September because we weren't able to do the normal transition days last term, um, but it was fantastic to see all the new year sevens and actually they were really relaxed and when we got them all uh, in the sports hall to start off with we could tell that it was a fantastic year group they were really positive i think we're quite skilled at may putting people at ease to to begin with and if if you know if people have individual anxieties you know we'll, we'll, we'll deal with them but you know as ed says it is a, it is a big step but it's a step that everyone uh, goes through but we do think we're, we're successful uh, with transition here and we can always offer more help if required for individual cases Thank you. So we've got lots of questions coming in from Year 6 students now. So <laughs> first we have Willow who loves art and she says what chances will I get to do this and what types of art are there? Followed by another creative student, Sophie, who asks whether or not Year 7 students will have an opportunity to do dance and drama performances. OK, so art first. I think we've got fantastic art rooms. Uh, Jen Tompkins, brilliant uh, head of art. If you've watched the video that, that, that we did, we are one of the few schools in the area that has a kiln. Uh, and so we're able to do all sorts of different media uh, in art. Start off with, you know, basic skills in colour and, and sketching and so on. But then we go on and using um, paint and clay, ceramics and so on. So the, the, the material that you do in art, the, the work that you do in art I think is wide ranging uh, and there's some brilliant opportunities. The rooms are inspiring, they look fantastic and we also do photography at GCSE and we do photography at A level as, as well. So yeah, it's a shame that you can't see the art rooms because they kind of speak for themselves but the brilliant facilities here and really enthusiastic and passionate teachers uh, in art. Uh, we do different productions, uh, musical productions each year. We have high participation from students in year seven uh, and then key stage three. And then we do um, more serious, I suppose, productions uh, in drama as well. Um, so we tend to do uh, a Christmas production, which is often a musical involving a large number of students with choreographed dance and, and song and so on. Uh, but we but then we've, we've also got an amazing drama studio now we've still got access to the Bramber studio in the ALC which is great but looking a little bit tired but the new drama studio in the Blake building is uh, is astonishing beautiful space um, and one of the lovely things is that we, we you know the year seven students are using that for or will be using that for their drama lessons that's got absolutely state-of-the-art um, audio visual uh, facilities in there as well and um, and the other thing which is quite nice now and increasingly attractive for students is that you we've got students who take uh, drama at uh, uh, um, key stage four um, but they may not actually want to be on stage but they want to do the backstage work the technical work around lighting uh, and sound uh, and they can get a qualification uh, around drama because we've got the facilities to offer that and it's the same with music we've got three uh, music rooms now all kitted out with uh, with the with the Max, um, but we've also got a re recording studio, re recording facilities in there. And once again, if you do music um, at Key Stage Four, um, you can you can follow a, a course in sort of uh, recording and the technical aspect as well as obviously the playing aspects as well. Uh, so we've always had positive and enthusiastic teachers. And one of the lovely things about getting the opening of the Blake Building is that we've got amazing facilities uh, as well to match. Thank you. A couple okay. of uh, questions about languages. Erin would like to know which languages we teach. Mm. And then we have another question which asks which languages we offer at GCSE and whether students can choose which language they study. Sure. Um, so about five years ago, we used to offer three languages, but unfortunately the popula uh, popularity of, of German diminished. So in the end, uh, we focused on two languages. So we offer Spanish and French. Uh, both at Key Stage 3 and at GCSE and at A-Level. We're actually one of the few schools in the locality that still runs A-Level in uh, modern foreign languages, which is a real shame, but we do have a, a market for it at Feltham. 
Uh, so what we do here is that in year seven, students do half a year of Spanish and half a year of French. And then at the end of year seven, they choose which one they want to specialise in in year eight and year nine. So they do either um, French for two years or Spanish. And then we feel that gives them sufficient grounding uh, to take it at GCSE if they want to take that. Uh, and numbers at GCSE are good. Matteo Cusci de Val is a, is a brilliant curriculum leader in languages. We do a lot of uh, cross curricular language events. Um, we um, international uh, languages week and so on. And uh, we're an international school as well. So that's helped with the with the popularity uh, of languages at the school. One, one of the things we do here is we talk about seven year journey and um, from the GCSEs that you can take, you can also take A levels in those languages as well, which is which is really important for for you going on to university or a career in in something to do with languages, which is which is something that we want we, we we offer as part of the school package, actually going all the way through from key stage three to key stage four to key stage five, and how those curriculums and now those key stages all link together. So from whether it's MFL or, or um, other subjects, there's always a route way through for you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. We've got another question here which looks at starting the school. It says if students come from the same primary school. Do we try and keep them with their class friends or do we separate them to extend their friendships beyond existing lines? OK, uh, I'll start and then Ed, you can uh, correct me if I go wrong. Um, I think we group students according to how we think they'll perform best in school. And so we are mindful of, of the information that we get when we visit the primary schools. Um, and we collate a lot of information that's given to us from the primary schools and we try and put students in the best groups that will work uh, to together. Uh, we also take note of uh, separating some children. If some parents feel that, that their child would be better off separated from a child, well, you know, we will take that into account. But we don't group students together based on friendships. We think it is an opportunity to, to reset and make new friends uh, when they come to the school. And that is what has been successful uh, with us over the years. We try and get as much information as we can and we put that together uh, for, the, for the form groups. So, yeah, okay. we, we get a lot of a lot of questions about friendship groups when it comes to doing tutor groups later on um, in year six sort of coming into year seven and um, give it two or three days and we, we never see those anxieties again because within those days they've made lots of new friends and actually you still get to see your friends from primary schools at break times and lunch times and you may be crossing with them in other lessons as well because we do have two year halves and um, so you may not be in the same tutor group but you may be in the same English class or maths class or PE class um, depending on which side of the year group you are as well so there's lots of opportunities um, to see friends within the school but um, what we what we need we all need to realise is is the tutor group we only see sort of in the morning for for 10 20 minutes in the morning if depending on on um, which year group you're in currently um, and that's the time where you'll see your, your tutor group and your friends in that tutor group if you're in there but then you spread out into lots of different subjects so it's really important that we get we learn those skills to be able to make friends and socialise so that actually we can be successful later on. Lots, lots of questions coming in about how we stretch and engage our most able students and Annette would like to know whether our highly achieving students are challenged throughout the year and whether we can share anything else about our maths and science departments. Okay, it's quite a lot there. Um, as I said earlier, you, we want to make sure that all children uh, fulfil their potential and we are aware of children's starting points based on their key stage two results that are usually sent up to us and from those not this year because obviously the key stage two sats didn't occur but from those we set challenging targets and all the teachers are aware uh, of those challenging targets but you've got to be a bit careful uh, of targets because clearly you sometimes get students who haven't done so well at key stage two but have huge potential uh, for you know for different reasons they may not have been successful so we want to make sure that we are as aspirational as we can possibly be. Um, sometimes we use sets. We put the students in uh, different sets, ability sets uh, in year seven for maths and then in sets for uh, maths and science uh, in year eight and year nine. And then in other sets, when we go into uh, post, six, um, post uh, key stage three, into key stage four, we mix the students up. 
Um, and our emphasis is on teaching to the top. I think some schools struggle in a way by teaching to the middle and, and accepting that as the as, as the is the norm and that should be OK. But actually, our aspirations are that we want us to stretch everyone. We want to teach and make sure that everyone is capable uh, potentially of getting the highest GCSE grades, because it, I think even if you struggle uh, a bit at school and and maybe you'll struggle to get level fours, if you're in a you know, if you're in it with a teacher who has high aspirations of getting seven, eights and nines at GCSEs, you will pick up things, you will gain confidence and that's how you can get the highest um, sorts of grades. We also offer um, extracurricular activities for some of our gifted and talented students. We have a um, annual residential at Lodge Hill where we take um, some of our brightest and more able students in year eight and year nine uh, to really give them uh, an experience which can push them on and then we do you know university visits uh, as as well and i am really pleased over the years that our track record at, at sick form is increasing and, and, and more of our students are applying to high quality universities to do more academic courses clearly that's not for everyone but we have noticed um, over the years that you know we've got more uh, students applying for for the, for the best universities in the country and that's and that's great one for you here, Ed. One of our year six students. How big is the football field? <laughs> um, I've taught in a lot of schools now, and it's um, it's the biggest field I've been um, experienced to. So um, yeah, we do have a 4G astroturf that is obviously all weather. Um, we have access to all the Aaron Leisure Centre facilities during the day. We have access to their swimming pool and the squash courts. Um, their double sports hall, which is very rare in a school. We've got a gymnasium, we've got the dance studio, we've got a Bramba studio, and we we probably can fit four, maybe five uh, rugby pitches on our field as well. Um, so yeah, we, we are blessed with our facilities in this school, specifically with uh, PE and sport. Um, and that is why the PE department is so successful here, is because they can really challenge those for the elite sport, but also they can really support in the, in, um, for those students that just want to remain fit and healthy. I think, yeah, I'd like to add to that. Bryn Hawkes <coughs> is a fantastic uh, head of PE. He's been at school many years and they've really got a great team of staff and the aspiration for them, uh, or for the students that, that they see is, is, is high and the participation rates, even in year 11 core PE, is, is, is very high. Uh, and then the, uni uh, the uniform that the the kit that the students wear is fantastic. Um, so we have got amazing facilities, but I think the the standards in the P department are, are amazing, and, and that's you know demonstrated as I walk around and you see you know the high level of activity going on. One of the things that we've been doing now for a number of years is having a whole school sports day uh, in the summer term, um, and. This is, you know, unfortunately we weren't able to do it this summer, obviously, but um, we have the whole of the school out, all, all of the students uh, and all of the staff as well. And everyone is participating. There's a really good ethos and there's competitions between uh, tutor groups in the year team. But I, I don't think you can do that. You can't have everyone out unless there's a really um, positive feeling about sport and PE and, and health and well-being in the school. But it's a really delightful day and uh, it's something that we've been doing for a number of years here and I think it's 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 a great it's a great event isn't it yeah it is, yep. yeah yeah okay so moving on to look at levels of support now we've got a question from a parent that says what resources do students receive if they are help if they need help with their homework yeah that's the first part of the question and the second part is what support do we provide parents with who want to help their own child when they're struggling okay um so our facilities are open before and after school. We've got an amazing library in the centre of the school that's open before and after school and there's computer facilities in there. Uh, and then we also open IT rooms uh, at lunchtime and students can work on those, uh, use those facilities for, for homework and support if they need to as well. I, I think our communication with parents is, is very, very good. Uh, one of the things that we were talking about today in a meeting was um, information evenings for parents. We usually do these live um, at the start of the year, but we haven't had the opportunity. But in those events, we get um, the curriculum leaders in different subjects to talk a bit about their subject and talk about how parents can support their children at home. 
there haven't been many positives, uh, obviously, with the COVID pandemic. But one of the things that has been a good step forward for us is, is the use of technology uh, to support learning and to support learning at home. Um, and we use uh, Microsoft um, Office 365 uh, at Felfham and we use Teams um, and we'll continue to, to use that as we come out of the pandemic because it's a great way of <clears throat> providing work for students and for students to get particular feedback from teachers um, and, and I think that's a that's a good step forward. I think it's anything you want to add. I, I just it, do it, people people come or students come to secondary school and they worry about homework straight away. But what they what what we need to realise is um, we're just training students into becoming more um, independent at home, basically, and and that's going to put you in a better situation for when you do sit your exams at GCSE and at A level because we do have to. Um, find a space at home to be able to do homework, etc. But if that isn't an option, um, we do provide the spaces like Mr. Hans has just said in terms of the library and ICT rooms. But in terms of offering support for parents, we have a real clear communication channels with um, teachers through email. We also have um, the, the teams, the, the way that Microsoft Teams has been set up is that each homework is really well explained um, so that any activities that are given for students to complete um, there shouldn't be any sort of issues with um, what their expectations are of, of what they need to produce. And if there are, then obviously you can put a message on the teams which the teacher will reply to. You can email the teacher and the teacher will reply to. But also, as Mark alluded to earlier, we have a really good support network with Pastor with the year manager and year leader. And if there are still issues and, and you're not quite understanding, you can get a message through to them who are non-teaching so they can get a message to us straight away so that we can help you if there is an issue. I think, I think parent communication is a real strength of, of our school. We try and always respond to parents' emails within 24 hours. Uh, and, and I think that's one of the things that when parents feed back to us that they're really pleased with, if they can contact members of staff, contact individual teachers or year leaders, we do tend to get back to people uh, uh, quickly. And so I think that's uh, you know, that's the strength of the school. I'm just conscious a bit of the time and and we've got Maddie sitting here so should we should we get Maddie to come in and step in thank you Maddie so Maddie is our head student this year as I, as I as I said and if there's any particular questions Michelle that might be useful for Maddie to answer then it's good for a, a student to hear it okay well, we've got one question that has come through specifically for you that says when you started did you meet new friends quickly Yes, um, I think that was something that I was originally very nervous about um, coming up into the transition day. Um, it definitely put me at ease, but I was still quite nervous about coming up because I didn't know quite a few people that were in my form. But because you have form meetings with your form tutor and the rest of your form group every day, you really quickly and really easily meet new people and make new friends. And I think that's something that you don't necessarily realise until you're in your form group. Um, and then you can really begin to appreciate how many new people you are meeting. So, yes, definitely. Thank you. And another question that you might be able to, uh, to answer here. Um, what's been your highlight throughout your time? <laughs> I think that's a very difficult question to answer. Um, I think if I summed it up, as a whole, I'd probably say just the sense of community that Feltham really does have. Um, it's something that I believe is really, really unique to Feltham. Um, all of the teachers make sure that the support is tailored to you and only you. And I think that that is something that is really important. Um, so as a whole, I would say probably the sense of community. Um, but if I had to highlight one thing in particular, I would probably say the trip to Lodge Hill. Um, it was a fantastic time where, again, I met loads of new people um, in the year below me as I went when I was in year nine. Um, and I think it's really important to meet new people um, and it really helped me to grow my confidence. Um, and another <laughs> highlight, sorry, I have quite a few, um, is becoming head student. It's something that I'm really privileged to have the opportunity for and it's something that I'm really enjoying so far. Um, so yeah. Very good. Excellent. We've got quite a few students, Maddie, who want to learn a little bit about science. 
they also need to be excited about experiments and you have the opportunity to do real experiments. OK, so I think I'm in quite a good position to talk a little bit about this as I do do two sciences at A level. Um, I do biology and chemistry and something that I really noticed from coming up from my primary school is how different science is. Um, you get to do so many experiments from the Bunsen burners to mixing different chemicals together and that's continued all the way from year seven all the way up through your GCSEs and if you choose to stay at A level then you do even more experiments. Um, it's definitely always been one of my highlights at Feltham because it, as I said, it is something that is so different to your primary schools where I remember learning about the structure of a plant um, and the solar system. And I think that's really all I did at <laughs> primary school. Um, so yes, you get lots of opportunities. And because Feltham has just opened two new science labs as well, there's even more opportunities to be able to do experiments. So yes. <laughs> Thank you. And Izzy's just asked, what is your role within the school as head student? What does mm. Okay, so as Mrs Kelly said, I am head student. So some of the things are things like this, being able to talk to you um, and be involved in some of the videos that the school's involved in um, and also helping run the school council. Um, so this is something from year seven that the school really actively encourages you to take part in. Um, and it's similar to, I know at my primary school we had something really similar um, and you just get to talk about your opinions and what you think could be improved in the school and I think that this is something that's really important because the staff here do listen to the students opinions um, and so I help to manage some of the school councillors as well. Um, helping organise different events as well, that's something that I do quite a lot of and also at sixth form there's a whole leadership team so it's not just me um, we have a deputy head and then different specialisms so we've got a head of charity for example um, because the, again the school's really big on charity here we have a charity week every year that every single student is involved in so helping to organize different events like that as well um, is part of my role mm. Here's one for you and Mr. Francis. Rowan loves nature and the natural world with aspirations to be a zookeeper. How would we help him to achieve this? Yeah, OK. Um, well, we are in a, you know, we're in a lovely part of the world and we've got a lovely site. I, you know, I would say that there's opportunities to study ecology. We've got a fantastic geography department. Um, Gauss Loggett does a brilliant job uh, there. Uh, as well. Um, so we do take advantage of our amazing um, school site uh, uh, as well. Um, and I think it's a bit about, you know, essentially it's a stepping stone. You need to get the qualifications. And as Maddie has, has said, you know, the science department here is strong. We've got amazing facilities. And if you have a passion for science, then, you know, you do triple science at GCSE, you do A levels. Um, post 16 uh, as well um, and the fantastic facilities that we've got mean that we'll be able to give you the support to, to follow your dream. Yeah I think something else is we have a careers advisor at course, school yeah. um, Mrs Woodman um, so she's really able to give you personalised support that's tailored to you so that you pick the right qualifications and you know what you need to do to get to where you want to be. Yeah that's, that's a really good point. Um, Jill Woman is is fantastic and all the students in year 11 have uh, careers interviews and or careers input one way or another. We run PSE and citizenship lessons as well when we talk about different careers opportunities but we often take students on on different visits and, and different trips sometimes only in small numbers uh, depending on what their particular interests are and we found that that's that sometimes is a, a real moment when students think, OK, this is what I want to do. This is the university I want to go to. This is what I, I, I want to study. Um, and, and Jill works really hard making sure there's lots of different opportunities for, for different students with different interests. Okay. Thank you. The last question here that's come for you, Maddie. What kind of opportunities do you have in the sixth form? OK, so there are lots of opportunities in sixth form. Some of them I've already <coughs> mentioned, so the sixth form leadership team, um, that's something that anybody can apply for um, and I think it's a really good way to help increase your confidence and also improve your leadership skills and different transferable skills for university. 
um, beyond the leadership team, there's loads and loads of post-16 qualifications. So Feltham doesn't just offer A-levels, we also offer different level three qualifications mm. as well. Um, so yeah, I think there's lots on offer at sixth form. We also, again, have form time. Um, it's once a week at sixth form, but you still have that dedicated time with your form tutor so that you can talk through any worries, concerns, um, and anything like that. Talk about the new sixth form hub. Maybe. Yes, we are also getting a new sixth form hub, which is opening in a few weeks, I believe, which is really exciting. So we are moving from our old common room into a new dedicated building for the sixth form. Um, this will have a, like a dedicated study area as well as a more social area um, that we can eat our lunch and talk with friends and things. Um, so it's a really exciting time for Fell from Sixth Form because a lot's changing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, going back to questions from parents, we have Katrina who would like to know what is our stance on the bullying. Okay, you'll come to that. In uh, well, I don't know. You're here, Maddie. I mean, you as, as a student, I'll, I'll well, I'll let you start, and you know what what your view would be, and then I'll I'll come in. I suppose with a with a school line. What, what, okay. What, what, what's so, your view? I think the first thing to appreciate is from my personal experience that there has not been a lot of bullying but obviously in a secondary school it is inevitable to have certain problems but something that Feltham is really good on as was previously mentioned earlier was the fact that you have year leaders and year managers um, they're a really good port of call as well as your form tutor to help discuss any worries or concerns that you do have so that any issues can be resolved as quickly as possible um, so yeah. No, no, thank you. Thank you for that. I think, uh, you know, we take a really strong line uh, when we when we find out about bullying and we want it dealt with as quickly as possible. We don't brush things under the carpet uh, and we tend to, you know, de deal with things head on. Um, I think uh, having good communication and knowing the students well means that we can pick up if we feel that they're uncomfortable, they're having difficulties and and, uh, and and students these days, which is great, they will speak out, they'll speak to their friends and their friends will speak uh, to teachers. So all our, our staff are, you know, are well versed in, in, in making sure that we look for particular signs uh, and having dedicated year leaders and year managers as well means that we can often resolve things uh, quickly and, you know, with a restorative approach, um, you know, we'll, we'll take a firm line if we need to, but quite often, I think sometimes students don't understand the the unpleasantness that they're causing, and when they when that's explained to them, then that can you know that can sort out the issue as well. Well, I, I think bullying of, of of younger students by older students is really rare. A lot of the issues that occur can occur between people who are formerly friends and often in the same year group, and um, sort of un unpleasantness unfortunately does does occur and that's kind of slightly different I suppose from bullying you know bullying is where there's something which is you know repetitive um, and where there's um, you know an intention to cause harm and where there's an imbalance of power and I think those sorts of issues I think we are aware when they occur and then we deal with them you know quickly and firmly but you know the normal sorts of falling into and out of friendships you know we try and deal with uh, in a positive way and, and, and try and m make sure that students get on as, as well as they can uh, in in form groups and in the year groups as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, talking about our older students working with younger students, we've got a question here about whether or not our students actively mentor younger students. Sure, Maddie, do you want to? Uh, uh, yeah, can you answer this one? <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. okay. Like... Yes. Um, so, as was previously mentioned, the first thing is peer supporters, which, although because of COVID, isn't currently happening. Mm. Um, this is a really good opportunity for the older students, um, so year 10 students, to talk to and communicate with the year 7 students. Um, another thing is um, tutoring in specific subjects. So last year, for example, I was lucky enough to tutor some people in year 11 for science. Um, I think sometimes having um, a different perspective to a teacher can be really valuable for a student and tutoring and being tutored is really actively encouraged here at Feltham. Um, so yeah. I think that's something that the student leadership team is keen on this year as well. You know, the, the best role models for our younger students are our older students. And I think it can be really 
powerful. It doesn't look bad on a UCAS application either to say that you've done that sort of thing. So in, as, as, as you know, Maddie has said, in different subjects, it, it, you know, it does occur um, and that's you know, beneficial for everyone, really. Okay. Another question whether or not we have ex-students coming into school to explain what their current jobs involve and how the school has helped them achieve their aspirations. Yeah, this is uh, another brilliant initiative that's been led by Jill Woodman. Uh, we've, we've previously we've used the Future First organisation uh, with alumni, and, but we've got a good um, database of ex-students and uh, they often come into school and are involved in the year 11 careers uh, interviews and we get them coming in to talk to different students in, in different ways. And I think over the years, that's something which I think has been a real um, development of the school that we're more outward looking and we're connecting with you know ex-students who are able to come in and tell their story and what's worked for them and what they got out of Felf and we've got the posters around the school haven't we yeah. of different people um, in doing different careers you've got Peter Kyle who's a MP for Hove now who is a ex from students we've got people who are successful business people we've got people who are in the police people who are in teaching and so on it's just really nice to see that they've wanted to give something back and, and told their their story so yeah it's something which I think we've developed uh, more and more over the year and it's something which I suppose is a is a target for us overall we want students to have as wider aspirations as possible it's a lovely area to live down in this part of Sussex and Feltham um, but there is a whole world out there and we want students to to be really ambitious to go uh, and get the best jobs and, and get the best apprenticeships and get the best places at university and think you know well if these people can do it then I can do it and I can go out there as well so yeah it's been great that the, the uh, level of support that we've had from ex-students and I think it's in gro it's growing and it's uh, and that's a that's a great thing as well. Okay. Thank you. Willow would like to know how you keep in contact with parents about how their child is getting on. Okay so we have um, quite sophisticated uh, assessment systems that we do regularly uh, in the school we do different uh, tests and assessment throughout the year and that information goes home to parents at least three times a year so you can see uh, how well your child is getting on uh, and then we do parents evenings uh, which unfortunately we're not able to do face to face at the moment but it's when parents come in and speak to the teachers similar to primary schools um, as well so we have those regular activities that we have but if parents have got any particular concerns or so on then they can always contact the year office and we can find information and, and send that home or indeed contact individual teachers so we have a calendar of regular assessments that we do that are fed back to check that children are fulfilling their potential and that they're on target to to, to do well um, but we can also do individual things if they're required as, as necessary have a question that's come in here that says good evening I believe teachers need to inspire the students to achieve what support do you give the staff to be inspirational to students driving their education? The most important job that I have in this school is appointing fantastic staff that's my main job um, and although it's lovely to have amazing facilities here schools are about the people um, and I think that we are very lucky here because we attract very good staff. There's a national teacher shortage, I'm sure people are aware of that, um, but we are fortunate at Feltham that when we put adverts out for jobs, people do want to come and work in this school. And it's partly about the, the sorts of things that we've talked about, the culture and ethos and the friendliness and the fantastic students that we have uh, as well. So I, I think that in order, the way that we get teachers to be inspirational is that we provide them with an environment where their passions can you know can show and I want people who play musical instruments to be in the music department I want actors in the drama department and sports men and women in PE and that's what we've got um, and because we've got the facilities and because we create that sort of culture um, I also think that we allow people to express their professional creativity we need consistency 
within the schools. But I sometimes wonder that some types of schools these days can be a little bit co um, corporate and a bit formulaic. And I've always said to people, I want amazing exam results. I want the highest standards, but I also want you to have the opportunity to take risks and to do things differently. And that I think is something that staff really appreciate. They can do things differently um, in their classrooms and they can, and they're allowed to make mistakes. They're allowed to get things wrong occasionally with lessons and, and be a bit experimental. Um, but I think that's the, re the way that we get the best teachers by giving some flexibility, trusting them uh, professionally and then success breeds success. When vacancies occur, um, other staff talk to their friends and colleagues in other schools and say, you know, come and work at, at Felfham. And that's why I think we've got such a, a reliable, strong um, and and creative team that we have got in the school. Thank you. Moving on to Tom, who says he loves literacy what can you look forward to at Felcom Community College? So you've got a comment on yes. literacy and... Uh, yes, um, so I think something that the English department does really well here is have a really varied curriculum. Um, so I know in year seven you study a whole range of literature um, from Harry Potter to more classical things like Shakespeare. Um, and because you're not set in year seven as well, it means that different um, I suppose interests and things can come through. Um, I'd say it's really varied and that follows all the way up to A-level because Feltham offers um, A-level English literature and English language as well. Um, yeah, I think, you know, just the fact that we've got an amazing library right in the heart of the school, um, I think is an indicator of how important we take you know, reading and literacy. I think it's something which is a challenge for a lot of schools. At the moment, we know that, that you know, young people aren't necessarily reading as much as, as, as we would like, um, but it's been a focus for us for a couple of years and we'll continue to do so in terms of reading for pleasure. But when you've got a great library and the library lessons that students have timetabled at Key Stage 3 as well, I think that does help. We've had um, reading time during uh, during the school day when we get students all reading and, and teachers reading as well. So I think it is going to be a continue to be a focus because the way that the assessment system is set up in, in this country remains that you've got to be able to read well. You've got to have a high reading age to navigate some of the higher tier papers at GCSE. And so it's clearly a vital skill and it's a focus for us um, at, at Feltham. Sorry, Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just going to say as well, Mr Thraves offers a reading yeah. club for Key Stage 3, which everybody's actively encouraged to get involved in. And also at Key Stage 3, you have a dedicated reading time each day. Yeah. Um, so again, reading is really encouraged. Fantastic. I'm a bit conscious of the time. We've done about an hour. I'm happy to continue for a bit. I don't know how the questions are coming in. Michelle. There are quite a few. There's one here. Um, my daughter would like to know if she wanted to learn extra maths or music or English or art, is she able to do so at break times and or outside of the standard school day? Yes, is the is is the short answer. We've got the, the amazing facilities, and you know you've only got to walk around the art department and the the music department, and they are busy at, at lunch times and they are busy before school and after school. And you know, it's also lovely to see in, in the maths department as well. We've got all sorts of students, but we've got our further maths brilliant kids who, who were kind of camped up there uh, as well as really good atmosphere uh, with, you know, with the most elite mathematicians who are studying further maths A-level and maths A-level and physics A-level as well. We enter the maths challenge each year, don't we? We have a large number of students uh, who are successful in in that area. So yeah, I think there's a lot of both formal um, opportunities for extracurricular activities, but also the informal things that we open up the rooms and students can take advantage of the facilities when they've got some free time. And in the sit form, if they've got free lessons that they can, you know, they're often found in you know the corner of the art room doing artwork or or or, or in one of the music practice rooms using those facilities. We have a number of questions about six form destinations that we would be able to answer in frequently. Yeah, asked sure. questions. Um, but we do have one for you, which is what are your proudest achievements as head teacher? Gosh, there's a, there's a thing. Um, it's funny, really, because I suppose I, I, I tend to I don't tend to dwell too much on what's been successful. I tend to focus on how I want things to to improve. But 
you know, I have been here 10 years now and I, I, I would like to think that the, the schools continue to improve. Uh, in answer to the question, I think one of the things that saddened me when I first started here back in 2010 is that when I used to drive down the road on the way to school, I'd see children at bus stops in different uniforms that didn't belong to Feltham Community College. They were living locally, but they were going to other secondary schools. And I'm delighted to say now that when I drive in, very rarely do I see um, a student who uh, fell from colours coming to our to our school. And, and the ones that I do, I think, well, they must have moved into the area and they, they, they just stay with us at the same secondary school. So that's fair enough. So that's one thing. We are attracting local people in the local community. They're not commuting out to go elsewhere and we're in, you know taking students from afar to come to us that's one thing um in, in terms of the sort of journey of of the school clearly getting the good Ofsted back in 2016 was it was a big step uh Feltham's been here since 1974 and unfortunately it, you know it had been satisfactory or re requires improvement um I think the staff knew that we were a good school, but we, it was important that we got that validation officially. Uh, and that was a significant step for us. Uh, and then getting that obviously reaffirmed as well. We were disappointed that we didn't get uh, outstanding, but you know, that's, that's the vagaries of Ofsted. Um, and then thirdly, um, I've, so I've spoken about the staff team, I suppose, and, and how how proud I am of the of the colleagues that we've gathered together and I, I suppose I'd have to say that the school buildings that we've got now are amazing and I did used to go and visit other schools and think why haven't my children at Feltham got these sorts of facilities um, and although it is about the quality of teaching you know the old Hums hats were a bit grotty weren't they yes. um, and now they've all gone and uh, this Blake building is incredible. We were really lucky uh, and, and West Sussex County Council looked after us 11 and a half million pounds and the two new science labs and the PE facilities as well. Uh, and it's and it's just kind of the thing that, that we needed really to, to you know, it's the, it's the school that the, the students and the community deserved. And one of the interesting things, I don't know if you've noticed, Maddie, is about the open spaces that we've got now actually having the, the new Ernest Joyce playground and, and that open space there and, and other bits of land that have been released actually I think is is open the school out and then where the sick form hub will be but uh, you know a new focus for the sick form sick form is here is great it's always been a part of the school but you know separate in its own way um, but I think it's it's fantastic that they'll have their own center with its own identity uh, and I think that would be a, a good strength uh, for us as well so I suppose yeah those sorts of things looking back I suppose but I'd say were pleasing. <laughs> One last question coming through then, just what opportunities do our students have to go on external school trips? Do you want to talk a bit about some of the things you've yes. done? Yeah, um, I've been on lots of trips, um, some shorter so just for the day. Um, each year the science department runs a science reward trip so I've been to Marwell Zoo, the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum and different places like that. Um, I've also been to Lodge Hill, which was a res residential trip. So we do, yeah, yeah, we do annual skiing trips. Uh, yes. we, we do uh, as as well. Clearly they're not, you know, not, not cheap, but, but we try and keep the price down as, as, as much as we can. We, we, we do a number of different trips as, as we've mentioned sort of around careers university visits as as well and then the thing that we introduced again last year uh, was the trip to blackland farm with all year sevens we subsidized did you go with your yes, you I did think. okay it's good probably my favorite thing in year seven. <laughs> so i think you know we wanted to give students a, a, an experience when they first started in year seven and um, given a night under canvas, it's it's uh, a residential trip and, and they do different activities, high rope uh, orienteering, we do a night hike and, and problem solving. And it was just a way to, to to do some team building. And, you know, Maddie can still remember it now. Yes. And, and so I think that's an experience that we want to reintroduce again when we're, you know, through this COVID mess, because that has been something which students really do look back on positively the school supplements the cost of that because we think it's so valuable but i think there's a lot of lots of different trips that go on we've we've in the previous years we've had the highest participation in dov uh, to other local schools 
as well. And I'm just really lucky that we've got staff who are prepared to give out their time. Uh, we've got language trips that go on. We've got um, trips to, you know, in, in RE take students away and uh, in R as well. So a whole variety of different trips. And and it's it's great that we've got the teachers who are prepared to run them and the students who enthusiastically embrace the opportunities. I think we'll probably call it a day there. Um, we have done very well. Mad Maddie, thanks ever so much. Thank <laughs> you for me. No, that was that that was great. Um, hopefully you found the uh, question and answer useful. Um, as I say, we'll do a frequently asked questions um, section, which we'll, we'll post up on the website. I'm sorry if you didn't get your questions answered, um, but I do hope that you found it useful. As I always say at this time of the year, make sure that you do put your forms in before the 31st of October uh, deadline. Um, and the final thing I'd like to say is um, I really hope you're interested in our school and we'd be delighted to welcome you into our new year seven uh, next September. OK, thank you very much. Thank you.